Welcome to this edition of SKNIS Week in Review. I am Ian Richards. A number of important initiatives took place this week that will significantly impact the lives of citizens and residents of St. Kitts and Nevis. Here are some of the highlights. The Budget Estimates Committee wrapped up its engagement with the technical staff and heads of public sector departments last Friday as efforts to craft the 2017 budget continue. The budget basically provides funding for government programs and activities for the 2017 fiscal year. Deputy Financial Secretary Calvin Edwards said major investments will be made to upgrade the national security infrastructure. The government is not sparing any, any resources in terms of giving the police the necessary resources that they would need to effectively fight crime. Financial Secretary Hazary Hazel said a new feature of the planning process involved making medium-term projections. In the medium framework that is developed by the Ministry of Finance, we also have the opportunity to look two years down the line. We cannot do a proper planning out of the investments that government needs to make, as well as the programs and the policies that needs to fit together nicely in just a snapshot of a 12-month period. The budget address is traditionally delivered in the Federal Parliament of St. Kitts and Nevis by the Minister of Finance in December. If you own a credit card or a debit card, chances are that you have likely used it to conduct a financial transaction, was it be to simply pay for groceries or to buy a meal. The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank held a workshop on Monday to explore ways to promote electronic payments. Shirima Matthew tells us more. St. Kitts and Nevis's Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance, Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris, commended the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank for hosting the workshop and ensuring that proper management and protection systems are in place. Today, the Central Bank, as part of its mandate, has managed to ensure that the appropriate systems are in place to allow for the proper management and supervision of our payment systems. With the introduction of timely upgrades, the ECCB has successfully maintained the real-time gross settlement system that supports the, ele the electronic capturing and processing of financial transactions from the point of initiation to the final settlement. This has allowed our citizens and residents to benefit from faster and more efficient processing of their business and personal transactions while using our banking system. Recommendations on ways to improve air traffic control operations, air navigation safety and meteorology were explored this week as the Ocean Terrace Inn was the venue for the third meeting of the Regional Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Technical Group. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Aviation, Ms. K. Bass, said that security in aviation is a top priority. It is not a modern phenomenon that it is a target for terrorists and other attacks. It is therefore imperative that all stakeholders, albeit state or private agencies, individuals or groups, remain steadfast in the goal to maintain safer skies. Residents of Bellevue and its surrounding communities were updated on the progress to upgrade Black Rocks to preserve its historical importance, enhance opportunities for local employment, and broaden its appeal to tourists. Vernon Lake, a member of the Whitegate Cooperation Board, said that roads have been repaved, drains constructed, and landscape work is being carried out. The work is part of a phase one of a three-phased project. Acting Commissioner of Labor, Shernel James, highlighted the role of the Department of Labor and how it works to protect the rights of employees and employers and also to ensure that work environments are safe and healthy for all. Alicia Blake tells us more. Ms. James was the guest on this week's edition of Working For You and said an important function of the agency is to prepare persons for the world of work. Topics include how to write a resume, how to dress for a job interview, what employers look for in staff, how to maintain a job, and the responsibilities of employees to ensure the business succeeds. 
Such training is currently ongoing with clients from the Department of Social Services, and there is also collaboration with the Clarence Fitzroy Bryant College on an annual basis. Ms. James said that there are plans to expand its engagement with high schools. It is kind of ticklish getting it off the mm -hmm. ground because of the 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 fifth formers are preparing for examinations, and so we'll have to look at it in approaching it from maybe from first form, sure. come up so that this is a continuous learning program. We we do it with national skills, and we were doing it with. Pet. Mm -hmm. um, once they're being trained, we go in, we speak with them, and we help them prepare for the world of work. 60 students from four primary schools in Constituency 7 received a helping hand from their parliamentary representative and Prime Minister, Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris, that will assist their parents to provide the necessary school supplies as they continue their studies. Here's Shirima Massey. A total of EC $30,000 was awarded to 60 students from the Joshua O. Williams, Edgar T. Morris, Voilet Petty, and the Estridge Primary Schools at the 13th Annual Help a Child Program Ceremony held on Wednesday, October 19th at the Estridge Moravian Church in Mansion. Prime Minister Harris spoke about the value of a good education and its correlation to a prosperous society. Nation building needs a foundation. And like every house, if the foundation is shaky, the house will fall down. Education is our foundation. It's the bedrock that enables us to build a better nation, enables us to know how to live in a way that distinguishes us as an international player and which is a mark of our cultivation and civilization. It's important, therefore, that we all work together in unity to create the right environment for learning. That means that we value and support our teachers in the important work that they do in inspiring our young people to develop a love of learning. And the month of youth in St. Kitts is fast approaching. Acting Director of the Department of Youth Empowerment, P.A. Liburd, said plans are being finalized to host a number of activities in November. These include a church service, youth business fair, a national youth forum, youth talent fest and rally, youth service awards and gala, and the 25 Most Remarkable Teen Awards. The reviewing of the federal youth policy will feature prominently during Youth Month. There are a few days left in October, and so we still have an opportunity to show an enhanced level of care to senior citizens as we celebrate the month of older persons. This month, a group of senior citizens from Nevis came to the sister island to socialize with colleagues and peers. Alicia Blake has more. Minister of State responsible for social services, Honorable Wendy Phipps, greeted the seniors and reiterated government's commitment to ensure their well-being. Also this week, Ruby Thomas of Newtown celebrated 96 years of age. Ms. Thomas was visited by Deputy Director of Social Services, Anne Wigley, who wished her well. In a strong voice, the 96-year-old credited God for allowing her to live for so long and demonstrated that she can still do math calculations. And thank the Lord for sparing my life to see. To see my, my, I read the age of that. My mother died when she was 45. She went to get an operation and she said, Ruby, I'm going to get an operation and I'm 45 years old. I said to her, Mom, am I going to live to come to your age? She said, darling, everything is in the hands of the Lord. And praise the Lord, I reached it and passed it. And I am happy about it. To know that I'm going hard for a hundred. Yeah. 96. Four more years from now, I'll be a hundred. And that's all for this week's edition of SKNIS Week in Review. I am Ian Richards.